Well, let me start by uh, once again welcoming all of us. Praise God uh, to uh, uh, to the preaching of the Word of God. And um, for those of you as well that uh, will be watching this online, we pray that you will be blessed by the sharing of the Word. And uh, as we are here, we just thank God for the sweet presence of the Holy Spirit and His goodness during a time of praise and worship. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I just keep extending this series of Laid by the Spirit um, <laughs> week after week. And I can see, I think, myself probably taking this all the way through to the end of the year. So now today I'm titling this part five, which is Obeying His Voice. And already I've got uh, some other things I'd like to talk about next week and probably the week after that. So I guess we're going to stick with this for the rest of the year. Amen. Amen. And I uh, just want to encourage those of you that could be watching this um, for the first time that just follow the link that you are watching this through and um, it will lead you to other uh, previous uh, recordings and, um, and, and help yourself enjoy and, and uh, listen to them. Uh, I believe that you will be blessed. Amen. Amen. So uh, today it's um, um, just building on what we've already been talking about, um, being led by the Spirit and uh, I'll, I'll focus on obeying the voice. Amen. As we said last week, this is our essence of Christianity. Amen. We have been redeemed. We belong to God. We are children of God and we follow Him. We walk after Him. That is our life. We, uh, we have a good shepherd and we are His sheep. We follow Him. He leads us. And, um, and it's not temporal, it's eternal. That's our life. It's, it's easy life because we have somebody who is the owner of this universe and the owner of this very life we lead. And he is committed to being with us, to talk to us, to lead us. All we need is to follow. And the Bible says that he leads us in greener pastures. Amen? He never leads us into temptation, but he actually delivers us from temptation. Amen? Amen. So he's somebody we can follow and be very happy to follow, be very glad to follow. Amen? And that is God. That is Jesus. That is the Holy Spirit. Amen? So let's only be good followers. That's it. Let's only be good followers and be good hearers as well. So today I will just talk briefly about obeying His voice. Obeying His voice. Again, I will, I will um, kind of go back to what we looked at last week. We looked at the life of Jesus. Amen? We looked at Jesus' life and Jesus being our example. Uh, we looked at some of the scriptures, how Jesus lived his life. Amen. There's no better person to learn from us being Christians who are called after his name than Master Jesus himself. Because he came to this earth to show us how to live. Amen. He came to be an example for us in everything. Praise God. So, let's look at how he lived again. What made his life successful in everything he ever did. Well, last week we looked at some of these scriptures. I've just added a couple to that. And that is all in the book of John. Amen. So, I can, I can we've got for those of you that are here, they are there on, on, on the screen. Uh, but those of you that are watching this, uh, I can tell you these scriptures. Just go into the book of John. Amen. Read the whole book of John. But if you start from chapter 5, there is a verse 19 where he says, So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of his own accord, but only what he sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does, that the Son does likewise. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we, we saw this last week. And this, this, there's, no, there's no harm repeating these things. Because these things are God's word 
and God's word is life to us. So if it's life to us, let's take the pill of life. Amen? Amen. Let's take it. Amen? Amen? If the doctor says, take this pill morning, afternoon, and evening, we do it. So we stay well or we recover. Yes. It's the same thing. The word of God is life to us. Amen. So let's take these pills. Let's read this word over and over and over again. And in the same chapter 5, verse 30, he says, By myself I can do nothing. I judge only as I hear, and my judgment is just. For I seek not to please myself, but him who sent me. Amen. That's what Jesus said. By myself. Now, I'm really, really, really humbled by Jesus' humility. Because we know Jesus did so many things. Many, many things. Performed many miracles. Miracles that many people today are seeking to perform so they can get the glory to themselves. So they can let people follow them. And, and, and unfortunately, sometimes, not even sometimes, that's what we're seeing now, that this has become the way of building the church. Building the church based on the gifts of God. That's not how God says we should build this church. Just because it's given you the gift of healing, it does not mean that you should then build the church or your congregation based on that gift and use that gift, or rather even misuse it or manipulate it. No, Jesus is somebody that had all the gifts embedded in him. And that's the reason why he could actually give them to us. Jesus had every calling in him. And that's why he could call us as well. Amen. He had every gift of the Holy Spirit. He embodies every calling of God. He was a prophet. He was an evangelist. He was a teacher. He was a pastor. And, and uh, he was an apostle. Everything in him. And that's why he is able to call us. Because he walked in those uh, offices. But listen to what he's saying. This humbles me. In John chapter 35, it says, By myself I can do nothing. Now for people that have followed this man and seen what he can do, and say these kind of words, it's the highest form of humility. How many people could do what, even a little bit of what Jesus said? and stand up before men and say, I can do nothing. It really humbles me. But Jesus is telling us the secret of his success. He could only do that which the Father tells him to do. Even passing judgment, he would only pass judgment as according to what the Father tells him to judge. And that's the reason why Jesus' judgment is always just. Amen. In John chapter 6, verse 38, he says, For I have come from heaven not to do my will, my own will, but to do the will of him who sent me. Amen. He's declaring that with all the things that he knew he would do. He declares it before us that whatever you see me do from now on is all the will of the Father. And then in chapter 8, John chapter 8, verse 28, he says, So Jesus said, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am He, and that I do nothing on my own, but speak just what the Father has taught me. Hallelujah. Just, only that, what the Father has taught me. John chapter 12, verse 49. I have not spoken on my own, but the Father who sent me has commanded me what to say and how to say it. Verse 50. I know that his command leads me to eternal life. So whatever I say is just what the Father has told me to say. Wow. And that's why in the book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 8, we see the effect of Jesus living his life like this. The Bible says in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. That is the effect of Jesus living his life as described in the book of John. A life led 
by the Spirit. That was the secret of Jesus' success in ministry. Amen? Amen. And I believe that if we follow this example, all of us, our definition of success in ministry will change. When I used to have a, 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 a member, an elder in the church here, and he used to say the ABC, uh, you know, uh, you know, I, I can't quite remember the what, what? attendance building, attendance building, and and cash <laughs> is the <laughs> is the definition sadly of many churches, you know. But we don't see that. That's not how Jesus wanted us to to do ministry. We do ministry this way. Let the Holy Spirit be the one who leads us. Mm. So if we follow Jesus' way, our definition of success in ministry will surely be different from what? From the ABC. Attendance, buildings, and cash. <laughs> and so the secret is what we saw last week. It's all this. Luke chapter 4 verse 1. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. You can ignore the other part, but the key word is, and was led by the Spirit. And from that day, there was never a single moment in Jesus' life when he was not led by the Spirit. And all the things that he has said in John, in the book of John, are evidence of a life led by the Spirit. Because the Spirit is the Father's way of communicating to us. And that was the Father's way of communicating to Jesus. And that's why before Jesus started the ministry, after he got baptized, the Holy Spirit came on him. And from that moment, the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness, led by the Spirit. Brothers and sisters, this is a life God wants us to lead. To be led by the Spirit is simple. That's what it is. Once we give our life to Jesus, it's a journey of being led by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Let's begin to discover this life. Now, to be led by something, there are two ways you can be led by something. One, you can be led by feel or touch. And that's what, at one time in our series here, I talked about the guide dog. Yeah? The guide dog has... There's a connection between the guide dog and the blind. That connection is the rope. So the rope is tied around the body of the guide dog. And then the other end is where the blind holds onto. So that rope is a link. It's a physical thing. You know, the blind can touch it. They can feel it. So in that case, they can't see, but they can touch the rope. And that guide dog is, is trained in such a way that it knows where it's going, and therefore the blind can follow and they will be all right. By feel and by touch. If I trust you, I will just hold on to you. I can cross my eyes and you can get me wherever I need to go safely. I am depending on touching you and depending on feeding you. Amen? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, if, and, and, and the people that are blind, I'm told, they develop this sense of touch that is so, so sensitive that they will know the person or the object that they are touching to. And that helps them to be led. Now, we know that feel and touch are senses. Amen? They are senses and uh, they are important senses. They are, they are relevant senses and they help us get along. Just like, you know, if you want to be, uh, to be laid, uh, you, you need to depend on that. But there's a danger though in this feel and the touch sense when it comes to our Christian walk. And this is what Jesus said at one time, in, in John chapter, uh, I don't think I've got this scripture here. Uh, let's see if I've got, if I've got it. Uh, no, I don't. 
But you know, you, you can, yeah, you can, it's John chapter 20, verse 29. This is what Jesus said to, uh, to Thomas, to Tom. He says, then Jesus said to him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. This is the case where Thomas the Demos needed to put his hands into the, the feet of Jesus and his hands to prove that indeed the nails had gone through his body. So Jesus said, because you have seen, you have believed. Or because you have touched. Or because you have felt me, you have believed. Those Blessed are those who have not seen, yet they have believed. So how then has God designed that we be led? How has God designed that we be led? Well, it's very simple because in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 14, he has said, for all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are the children of God. Amen. This is how God has designed that we be led. God has not designed that we be led by the touching and the feel. God has designed that we be led by the Spirit. Because it says, for them that are led by the Spirit of God, these are the ones living as the children of God. So children of God are meant to be led by the Spirit of God. And that's exactly how Jesus lived as an example. Jesus, every moment of his life, in Luke chapter 4 verse 1 says, he was led by the Spirit. So we are spirit led. Hallelujah. We have to be led by the Spirit. And, uh, but the spirit is not tangible. Amen? Amen? The spirit is not physical. And that rules out the, uh, the, uh, any chance that we can ever, you know, go back to being led by feeding and touching. Because the one God has designed to lead us is not tangible. He is spirit. So that emphasizes the very underscores the very reason why God has not designed us to be led by feelings and touch, but to be led by what we hear. Amen. You can be led by touching somebody and following them, but you can also be led by what you hear. The blind do do that as well. Those who are just blind but the ears are, are functional. You can clap your hand right in the corner. If they recognize your voice, they will come to you. Or you throw them some kind of a physical thing, they hold on to it, and then they will come to you. But we see in Romans chapter 8 verse 14, that God has ruled out the physical contact. Because if he wanted us to be led by the physical contact, Jesus will still be here. Amen. Amen? Jesus will still be here. You know, even when he was still here, people would still stumble and, and, and not know who he was. He would be in the room and they were thinking, so who, who is Jesus among these people? You see, that's why even the people that need, arrested him needed some kind of a sign. To arrest him. So it's not always the case. That just because he's physical would follow. I tell you, Jesus will still be physical here and people would not follow him. Or others would just mistake him for something else. He was here. And only a percentage of the population he was in contact with followed him. <laughs> Amen. That's why Jesus said, 
you know, blessed are those who believe not by seeing. Seeing is not everything. Even though in the world we are taught that seeing is believing. Well, Jesus said, no. Blessed are those who believe not because they have seen. That's why the Holy Spirit is the way God has designed us to follow him. And that's why he said, wait until he comes. And this is how he will lead you. Amen. He's not going to come in the physical form as my son, as Jesus came, but he will come as a spirit. And even Jesus himself was led by the spirit. Do you think when the spirit of God came upon him, he never joined that he wasn't physical. The Bible says that, of course, the dove was, you know, was physical for people to see. That was only for people to see. Because they heard the voice of the Father, and then they saw the physical manifestation of the Spirit. And that was it. When he was left in the wilderness, we have not heard of that dove again. All Jesus was hearing now was the voice of the Spirit in the wilderness. And ever since, when he was doing all the things he was doing, when I only do what I hear than my Father do. How was he hearing that? By the Spirit. I only do what I see my father do. How was he seeing that? In the spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. It's in the spirit. So we, we have to, to hear these things by the spirit. We are children of God. There's no other way apart from Romans chapter 14. How are we going to be late? There is no other way. I haven't seen any other way in the word of God that we Christians are meant to be late, except by the Spirit of God. Romans 18, 14. And it's challengeable. That is the way God has said. And that's why the Holy Spirit came. Hallelujah. Praise God that the Holy Spirit has a voice. Amen. Because if we are going to be led by the Spirit who is not tangible, okay, we can't touch him physically. Then we depend on the hearing to know where he is, his location, his position, and what he's trying to say. We are depending now on the voice here. Hallelujah. The voice. And that's why now John, Jesus, begins to explain the relationship between the good shepherd and the sheep. Can you imagine? That's why the sheep is considered, even though sheep have got eyes, they are considered to be dumb and blind. Because Jesus said, sheep, I don't want you to depend on your eyes. I want you to depend on something else, ears. And then he begins to explain the relationship between the good shepherd and the sheep. Hallelujah. I mean, uh, we will come to that, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. But listen, how important it is. This is what Jesus even says in the book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 29. Whoever has ears, not whoever has eyes, not whoever has touch, not whoever has what? Whoever has what? Ears. Let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The churches is you and I. It's not the buildings. It's not the ABC, attendance building cash. The church is, is you and me. And what does the church need to have? Ears, not eyes, not physical touch. Ears. Let him who has ears hear what the Spirit says. Them that are led by the Spirit of God, the same are the children of God. But this verse, Romans 8 verse 14, you're going to be fed up of hearing it. <laughs> but we, not, we won't be fed up of hearing this verse, amen? We just keep coming back to them. Them that are led by the Spirit, the same are the ones living as children of God. Because that's how I've made it to be. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, of course, this chapter is very, is very long, but I want us to read through John chapter 10. I'll read it. John chapter 10. This is where the Bible titles it as the Good Shepherd and His Sheep. It's telling about the relationship between the Good Shepherd and Sheep. Now, let's see 
what is the anchor of this relationship between the good shepherd and the sheep? Is it the smell? <laughs> is it the touch? Is it the sight? What is it? What is this relationship between the good shepherd and the sheep based on? Let's start from verse 10. Verse 1, brother, of John chapter 10. Verily, verily, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter by the sheep pen, by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. Verse 2. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. Verse 3. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. Now, I want you to count this word, voice. I've just said the first one in verse 3. And the sheep listen to his voice. Yeah? Brother Taco, do that. Okay, use your fingers. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Verse 4. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. Verse 5. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize the stranger's voice. Verse 6. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Verse 7. Therefore Jesus said again, Verily, truly I say to you, I am the gate of the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep have not listened to them. Take that as voice. Verse 9. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. Verse 10. The thief comes only to steal and to kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the, good, is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. Verse 13. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. Verse 14. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father. I lay down my life for the sheep. Verse 16. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice. And there shall be one flock and one shepherd. Verse 17. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life, only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and the authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. Verse 19. The Jews who heard these words were again divided. Many of them said, He is demon possessed and raving mad. Why listen to him? Verse 21. But others said, These are not the sayings of the man possessed by a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? Uh, verse 22. Then came the festival of dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter. Verse 23, and Jesus was in the temple courts walking in Solomon's uh, coronet. Verse 24, the Jews were there gathered around him saying, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Verse 25, Jesus answered, I tell you, but you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify about me. Verse 26, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. Verse 27, my sheep listen to my voice, I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one, no one will snatch them out of my hand. Hallelujah. And then it goes on and on up to the end of the chapter in verse 42. Amen. So out of 42 verses, 
of John chapter 10, how many times has the word voice been mentioned? Six. Six times. Six times. And I said last week here that you see, Jesus is not one we need to repeat himself. Because everything that he says is important. Get it for the very first time he says it. But because he understood who these people are and who we are as well sometimes, thank God that he repeats certain things. He says very, very, okay, so that we just catch him. We catch what he's saying. But this word voice has been repeated six times in this chapter. Of 42 verses. What is it all trying to tell us? That of all the mechanisms that the shepherd and the sheep could have to build their relationship, the one mechanism that Jesus is telling us is what builds the relationship between the sheep and the shepherd is the voice. Isn't that strange? Not even their names. <laughs> you know, you could call, I remember when I was a shepherd boy, we called, we called animals names. And, 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 I mean, I mean, and strangely enough, these animals, these cows, knew their names. We'd call them by the name and, and this cow would come along. I remember that very well. Names. And, and, and all these things, sometimes it would, you know, the animals would actually recognize the shepherd, sight, all these kind of mechanisms. But Jesus says the relationship between the good shepherd, as in chapter 10, is based on one thing, voice. Hearing. Hearing. Hallelujah. So to hear the voice of God means... And like I said last week, what is the evidence that you have heard the voice of God? John chapter 10, verse 27. In all this chapter, you can see that everywhere he mentions voice, he has also mentioned something that the sheep have done. They have followed him. The evidence that we are hearing the voice of God is that we follow. And we said last week uh, from, from that chapter in Deuteronomy, to follow means to obey him. To do everything that he tells us. To walk in his footsteps. Have we got that scripture? Yeah, it's right here. Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 4. That's what we looked at last week. It says, and ye shall walk after, means to follow, the Lord your God, and fear, respect, worship him, and keep, retain, obey his commandments, and obey his, 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 his voice. And ye shall serve, labor with him, and cleave unto him. So everything in walking after, following him, is pointing to the fact that we do something tangible, something practical. We follow him, we obey him, we do things that he's telling us to. Amen. We do things that he's telling us to do. That's what we should be doing. So to follow is the evidence of everything that we need to do. Now the good thing is that from this scripture, we can see that even though the Holy Spirit is spirit, is not tangible, thank God that there's something tangible about him that connects to one of our senses, which is the voice. He is not, uh, the Holy Spirit is not, uh, is, is not dumb. The Holy Spirit is, is not just some, something that is uh, quiet and then we've got to figure it out. And, no, the Holy Spirit has a voice that we can hear. Amen. He has a voice that he can hear. And we can respond to that voice. Literally, we can respond to that voice. So I think the, the, the onus is on us Christians, you know, to begin to develop uh, ways. In, fa in fact, I would want to challenge us actually in this week as well, you know, you know, develop ways in which the Holy Spirit speaks to you. You can, you can even come 
over here next week and, and testify of how the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. I think there are some of the, the, the practices that we should be encouraging ourselves to do. Because he has a voice. We know God speaks, don't we? And, and, and God expects us to hear him. That's why he says, my sheep hear my voice. And he expects us to, to, to demonstrate that hearing by following him. The question is, are we, once we hear his voice, what are we doing about it? You know, God does not just speak for the sake of speaking. Amen? No. God, God is not a, 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 what do you call it, the, a, a gong, a, 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 a tin of an empty tin. You just beat, you know, you know when, when I was growing up again uh, in, in the village, you know, sometimes you just want to row the, the villagers and disturb their peace. We get this, this tin for no reason and you are just beating it. Beating it and just creating this noise for, for nothing. <laughs> I, I, I tell you, we, sometimes you just grow up, you know, collecting uh, bottle tops. <laughs> you know, and you just get into this habit of, you know, going to the nearby farm and you are collecting these bottle tops for nothing. <laughs> and you are just keeping them. And then at some point, you may figure out and make something out of it. Mm. Or maybe collect these things and and attach them to a string and run down the road and up the road and making all this noise. <laughs> that is gone. <laughs> Meaningless noise. God does not speak like that. Whenever God speaks, there is a purpose why he's speaking to us. He wants us to respond. And one response that we need to do is to follow him. Amen? Because God always has information when he speaks. He has something he wants us to to hear. I mean, now let just one quickly uh, something that we need to learn. Of course, we need to learn to, to hear his voice, that is very important. And also, we need to learn to identify his voice. That's some of the things that practically, as a believer, begin to, to, uh, to, to discover how you identify the voice of Jesus. And we will talk about that um, uh, later on, but we have. In here, one of the verses which says, And the voice of a stranger they will not follow. Mm -hmm. Verse 5, They will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize the stranger's voice. Mm -hmm. Isn't that powerful? They do not recognize. So that means Christians, the onus is on us. We came to develop. I think I've said this before. And I've heard that the people who are trained to detect uh, fake currencies, okay, now we have machines, isn't it? In the banks, they have these machines that you put the money in there and, you know, they look at it sometimes, and but they still put it in the machine. They've got this pen, they cross it over the, the, the note, and they see some, you know, there are things that they see there, you know, but they can also see, you know, using their, you know, their naked eyes. They say the people who are trained to detect fake money are those who spend time studying the real thing. They know the real money. So when they look at the fake, it does not match up with the real that they know. So they detect it. They don't spend time studying the fake. Because there are so many fakes. So study the real thing. So it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Jesus starts by emphasizing the sheep hear my voice and they follow me. So once you know the voice of God, then you come to verse 5. When the stranger comes with another voice, guess what? You detect it. This is not the voice of Jesus. I can't follow it. So Christians begin to understand the voice of God. How he speaks to you personally. How we hear him. How he, 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 his, the tone of his voice. That is important. And then, once we get to that, but there's something that we need to do. We need to respond and do it. Now, there's a scripture in... Uh, What's that scripture? Yeah, John chapter 2, verse 5. We know this story very well, isn't it? We know this story very well. John chapter 2, verse 5. This was the time when... The, the, this was the first miracle that Jesus performed at the wedding in Cana. 
And then at that wedding, they ran out of wine. And they needed some wine. The wedding was still going on. Now we've just come from uh, some weddings. Okay, the wedding is still going on, going on, going on, but they've run out of drink, <laughs> wine. And they know the mother of Jesus, Mary, because she has understood the son, she knows this man can do something. So the disciples come to, to her and say, we've run out of this, what should we do? And this is what the mother of Jesus, Mary, said to them. His mother said unto the servants, Whatsoever he says, do it. Amen. What's what? Whatsoever he says, do it. Now I want us to see two things here. In this whatsoever he says, do it. First of all, Mary lets the disciples understand that <laughs> What he will say to you might not make sense. That's why he says, whatsoever. She didn't want, she knew Jesus could do something. But she also understands he does it in diverse ways. So he says, you might expect that he will give you money to go and buy wine. Okay? Across the road. <laughs> or he, you might expect that he will know there's somebody who is still hiding some wine. So you say, there's somebody in here, go to that person. So I don't know. But all I'm telling you is, whatsoever he tells you to do, do it. So, what do they do? They go to him. Master, we have run out of wine like he didn't know. He knew already. And then he tells them, just like Mary says, the most weird way of getting wine. Bring pots of water. If Mary had not told them, pre-warned them that it could be weird, it could be strange, Probably they would not even have obeyed his instructions. But thank God they did. That's why, beloved, the life of the Holy Spirit, like Jesus himself experienced it, is never a one way. The, the Holy Spirit has diverse ways of speaking to us. Begin a journey, or rather if you're already on that journey, ignite understanding or knowing some words the Holy Spirit speaks to you. And they are marvelous words. Some of them may become more prominent to you and you even actually expect them to happen, but that's not the only way. There will be other words he will speak to you. Secondly, do it. Because to follow, as we have said, means to obey. Mm -hmm. To do exactly what he's telling us to do. Whatsoever he tells you to do, do it. Folks, that's the beginning of a life being led by the Spirit. Do it. But, of course, to do it, we would have gotten to a point where we know how he speaks to us. The Holy Spirit. He speaks. He speaks. And there's that scripture John chapter 1 22 says do not be mere uh, li do not mere listen to the word so to receive yourself do what it says mm -hmm. this is what comes say you should be doers of the word mm -hmm. doers of the voice the sheep bear my voice and they follow but whatever he tells us to do do it because that's how Jesus lived he says whatever the father tells me to do is what I do it's the same thing with us. But let's also develop, develop ourselves in the way he speaks to us. In the way he speaks to us. Let's develop that confidence. Let's develop that, uh, that relationship. That voice hearing best relationship. And then, and then once we uh, develop that confidence in that, 
who, who find the doing even easier. No matter how strange it may feel, we know it's him who is speaking to us. Whatever he tells us to do, let's just do it. That was the, that was the essence of the miraculous life of Jesus Christ. And that's the reason why, even at this wedding, this miracle happened. We may not do everything Jesus did, but if we develop doing whatever he tells us to do, we will see miracles in our lives. That is a guarantee. We will begin to see things miraculously in our lives. Why? Because we are obeying the voice. Mm -hmm. Obeying the voice always has a, a, an effect. It, there will be something that will happen. Something will happen, something will tangibly manifest mm -hmm. because we have obeyed the voice. If we don't, then the miracle at Cana will not happen in our lives either. It may not be turning water into wine, but there will be a miracle whenever we do what the voice of the Holy Spirit tells us to do. That's what we need to do. Now we know the Holy Spirit is the only way we are meant to be led by God. And that way is through the hearing, voice, good shepherd, shepherd method. And that means that we have to sharpen our ears. We must tune our ears. This is important to our Christian life. Not this, but this. And I mean this of the Spirit. Amen? Not this, just this face of ears, but the Spirit of God. That's how He wants us to hear Him. Amen? So begin to develop this journey. It could be the time of prayer, maybe. That's when you hear Him a lot. He speaks to you certain things. It could be a time when you are meditating on the Word of God. It could be a time when you are, uh, maybe you are praising God, you are singing. Uh, it could be all diverse ways. There are so many ways. Just be open. Be conscious that the Holy Spirit is our Mary. Amen? Amen? The Holy Spirit is our Mary. You know, do whatever He wants you, you know, He's telling you to do. And the servants are us. Amen? Hallelujah. Do whatever he's telling you to do. Do whatever he's telling you to do. Do it. Hallelujah. So thank God that these uh, uh, the servants, they had the mother of Jesus tell them. We may not have the mother of Jesus with us, but we have the Holy Spirit. And he's always telling us what God wants us to do. Mm. Amen. The Holy Spirit is always telling us what God wants us to do. I feel sometimes he tells us, you lost an opportunity there. But it's all right. Yeah, let, let's get on with this. Oh, you lost an opportunity there. But you see, there are those moments sometimes we are not even aware where he says also, well done, well done, my servant. You have done exactly what my father told me to tell you to do. You have followed my ways. Hallelujah. So in this week, I challenge us. Let's begin to develop ways in which the Holy Spirit speaks to us. Amen. That's the X factor of our living a life that is led by the Spirit. Let's pay attention, close attention, what he is saying that is important make what he is saying the final authority over any other voice amen make what he's saying the final authority over any other voice because remember there will be other voices maybe we'll talk about this as we go on be obedient to do it don't just hear it. Do it. And pursue it continuously. Like the sheep follows the master. All the way outside the pen. Throughout the day. Up until again they come back into the pen. 
for the night. That is our Father's way of being led by the Spirit. Whatever He tells you to do, do it. Obeying the voice of God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Father in heaven, we are grateful once again today. Thank you for reminding us that we are to be led by your Spirit by knowing his voice, recognizing his voice, and also following his voice, doing what he tells us to do. And we know that there will be a manifestation of power in our lives, miracles in our lives. Because your instructions, your commands, they come with power. The unctioning of the Holy Spirit is behind every word you give us. So, Father, I pray for ourselves here that we will desire to begin to, to know, understand how your voice comes to us. For we know that when we know your voice, the voice of a stranger, we cannot follow. I pray, dear God, Sweet Holy Spirit, lead your people into hearing your voice and doing what your voice says. We thank you for the miracles in our lives. We thank you for the testimonies. We thank you for the stories of the diverse ways in which you speak to us through voices, audible voices, through dreams, through ways of knowledge, through ways of discernment, through prophecy, through your word, your written word, when we read it, the illumination of your word into our spirits, through revelation. Father, thank you for these beautiful, wonderful journeys that we are on. Almighty God, sweet Holy Spirit, breathe upon each and every one of us this understanding. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. So I encourage you, beloved, next week and the weeks that are coming, that we come here and we, we testify uh, of um, how the Holy Spirit is leading us. Amen. Let's not be afraid. Let's not be afraid to talk about it. We hear Him. We do. You do. Let's just develop those, and and the, the more you develop confidence in it, the more you see you see the consistency of it. Actually, amen. amen. Becomes a pattern of our lives because that was the pattern of Jesus. Praise be to God. Amen.